So you're animating a character, but you want to add some extra functionality to it. How do you go about it? Well, you could add a bunch of scripts and kind of manage the state machines through scriptable objects like we did in the other one. Or a simpler way is to use Unity's Animator Override Controller. Unity's Animator Override Controller is used to swap the animator state machine out with another overridden animator state machine. It makes it really easy to switch between multiple animations for the same kind of action or with different kind of items, but they're still doing the same thing. Uh, for example, in this video, we're going to cover weapon idles. And so if you have a gun or, you know, a sword, but you just want your animator to stay clean and, and concise, this is a really good way to have that done. The override controller has multiple uses, but today I'm going to show you one very dynamic one that has the ability to keep your animator clean and concise while using minimal code. All right, guys, how's it going? So I'm going to show you what we have to start off with. We're just going to start off with, you know, just a scene where we can run around, we can pick up weapons. And basically, by default, we're getting the, the pistol animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the animator override controller to override this animation and swap it out with whatever one we want. So it's a pretty cool feature that there is, and it keeps your animator clean. So if you look at our animator right now, we have one spot with one transition, so we don't have to add any more transitions. We can literally just call this weapon idle. Weapon idle, all right? And so now we're going to use this weapon idle as the container for all of our weapon idles. So what we're going to do, we're going to start on, we're going to make a new script, and we're going to call it, call it uh, player override animations okay and so what we need in this is we're going to take the animations that we have we're going to override them and this works beyond just weapons and guns and stuff like that so the first thing first we need a uh, I'm just using public variables because I'm trying to do this fast and I don't like underscores and I feel like I have OCD to use underscores and it's private so let's just do this all right so we need a public animator so we need to get a reference to our animator we need a let's do a hide and inspector a public animator override controller. We'll call this override controller. Very simple. So this is what's going to be doing all the dirty work here. Uh, and then we're going to get a riff. Oh, we're going to get a reference to our animation clip, our default animation clip. Uh, so we'll call this like uh, gun default gun idle. Okay. And then that, I think, let's let's continue, let's start going with it. So we want a method to public override, uh, public void override animations, okay? And what that's going to take in is an animation clip. So the default clip, call it default clip, and then animation clip, you know, the override clip, okay? Very simple. I know my keyboard is loud. I'm sorry. And so now we have to, we're going to actually have to do this really quick. So in start, we're going to, you know, animator has to get component and children of the animator just to make sure it's all working. You know, we don't want, otherwise we could drag it in in the inspector, but this is just a good way to not have to do that. And then a, okay, so we're going to basically go to our override controller. This is the first step. Override controller is equal to a new animator override controller. And then we put in our animator dot animator animation runtime. It's like a runtime animator controller. All right. And then after we have that all set up, we're going to set that equal to our new override controller. I know it looks like it's looping through, but basically we're creating a new animator override controller every time we update the animations. And then through that, we can replace the animation. So now we have this going. We just take our override controller, we take our default clip as if it's in an array because it's accessing the value and we're just replacing it with our override clip. And it's really that simple. So basically what we're telling is whenever we call this, we're gonna override the animations from our default clip to our override clip. You can do this with guns, you can do this with anything. The fact that this is so generic, you just call it. You can even do it in a for each loop if you have a list of animations. Pretty great, it's pretty cool. And so one thing I like to do just in case, you know, on bigger projects, this is what I do, is I have a reset animations or reset, right? we get to do reset override, right? And we just take in our animation clip, we take in the default clip. So how you reset it is literally going to be very similar. You take your override controller and your default clip and it equals the default clip. So if you have an animation that has the same as the default clip, it will just put it back. Pretty good, pretty cool. So now we have this, but it's not gonna go in yet because we have to, you know, 
tell it to do it, you know? So let's let's go here back to our uh, pick up weapon script. That's where I'm gonna do it. As soon as we pick up the weapon, we're gonna swap the animations. Okay, so here we will do, we will take, okay, yeah. So we basically need to get our, can we do this? Can we, I've tried this before and it wasn't working. So our player override animations, we'll call it override uh, animations is equal to uh, other dot get component player override animations. Very simple. So now it's cached, we're good to go. And so what we wanna do is we wanna access, we wanna get our default clip. So we'll say animation clip, default clip is equal to override animations dot default gun idle, okay? And then we're gonna want an animation clip of our weapon, our new weapon clip. So we'll say weapon clip is equal to, and we have to actually store it somewhere. So one way you can store, I mean, what I'm gonna do here is just make a, you know, another script and pop it on each of these weapon prefabs that we have here. And we're just going to, you know, hold the animations there and access them through that. So let's do weapon animations, I guess. And it sometimes it's not, it probably would be better to use some kind of scriptable object or something else to hold these animations. Or, or maybe not. I mean, either way, this is this is not fun. It's not bad. It just kind of clutters up the prefab. So if you have a lot of prefabs or a lot of uh, scripts there, you are going to get kind of a screwed. So let's uh, go. Okay, so we have the weapon animations. Basically, this weapon animation, at least for this one, is just going to hold an animation clip. Let's say weapon idle. And this is the one we're going to replace it with. We want to go to our weapons prefabs. Basically add this to all of them. Uh, weapon uh, animations, where is it? Oh, we have an error, so we have to fix this up. Okay, string child tag. Oh, okay, we'll fix that later in a second here. Because we had the error, it wasn't showing up. So let's go back, okay, now we're here. We gotta go to our prefabs, weapons, boom, boom, boom. And we will do weapon animations. This is going to hold an animation clip, each one of these. So for bow, we're going to go to our animation clip. We're going to go bow, bow idle. Oh, I have two of them. Okay, because I have a very organized way of setting this up. We're going to go here. We're going to put bow idle new. We're going to go pistol new. Just so I know which one I'm using here. Rifle new. And this is a good practice. So you can basically, the reason I duplicate it is sometimes you want to add animation events. And through, when you, when you import animation clips, I'll, and you don't make them in Unity, they're, they've, they're always read-only, so duplicating it will stop that. Okay, so let's go to our prefabs, we'll go to weapons, bow, we'll have bow idle new, perfect. Handgun, we'll have pistol idle new, pistol idle new, perfect. And rifle, we'll have rifle idle new. Okay, so now that we have all, that all set up, we go back to our pickup weapon, let's get our weapon clip here. And so our weapon clip, is basically going to be on the child so we already got the child so that's good child dot get component weapon animations right weapon idle simple as that and so now we just call our override animations dot override animations we take our default clip we take our weapon clip and that overrides it whenever we pick it up it should pull it and override it no issues no questions asked as they say and we will see what happens. So make sure that we add the scripts to the correct piece of people, right? So we have these scripts are on there, they're good. We need to add the override animations to this guy. So let's add that. We have the animator default gun idle. So we just need the default gun idle, which we're using the pistol new. So whatever the default is in here, that's what I'm gonna be using. So that's what we always go back to. It can be anything you want. Um, and so the animator is gonna be called there, so that's not a big deal. Let us See what happens. Hopefully I didn't overlook a step here. And now we're just gonna play. We have our weapons here. Okay, and so now we have the bow, pistol, rifle. See, we have three different animations. And on the animator controller, one place for them all. If you wanna see, see it says pistol idle right now. And go, sw swapping and swipping, you know, overriding, whatever we have. It's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, but as you can see right now, our guy is not moving his legs. And so there are many ways to do this, right? The, the, I guess the smart way to do it would be to hold, you know, all the different, you know, specific 
movement animations in in the gun and you know if if it's a different kind of movement animation then you have to switch it out but another way you know kind of a, a janky way to do it and and you might be able to get away with it if you have a you know separate if you have a good looking animation that works with weapons uh, but on this one it's not that good but we're, i'm going to show you how to do this is we're going to use something called the layers if, you, if you've never used this it's pretty cool the layers tab in order to you know show us what in order to uh, trans transition between the idols but keep the bottom layer you know in movement so what we're going to do is we're going to have like a has weapon layer okay so you see right here we need an avatar mask so what that's going to do is mask we're going to mask the upper body so it's doing the animation and the lower body will still be doing this movement so let's let's take this weapon idle pop it out here we can get rid of it here no need for even transitions anymore we have this and so what we're going to do is we're going to create an avatar mask and then toggle it on when we pick up a weapon so let me go to where i keep my animations that's fine you go to create avatar mask we'll call this uh, ninja or we'll call this upper body mask i think that's fine it doesn't even have to work with just the ninja if you have the same skeleton you work with all of them for transform we're going to take our avatar that we have we have the ninja avatar we're going to import the skeleton and basically just turn off what we don't want to change so we don't want to change the hips we don't want to change the right leg uh, probably some of the spines we don't want to change i don't know how far up the spine we don't change i think this is good we don't want the head to turn right we just want the leg the arms to come up and that's it and so let's put our avatar mask on here and okay so now in order to get that to work instead of the bull right that's where it's happening is the bull so what we want to do is we want to take the animate character we want to take animate has weapon turn this from a bull to a float and basically we just say set layer weight and for set layer weight you just take the index so the index of this one is one because zero one right so we turn one to the value which will be one so we're going to change that where we do it here where is it pick up weapon true anime has weapon is now one instead of true right that easy so now we get this going we get this going yeah okay so we have that that that's going we push play and boom our legs are moving even though he looks like a wonky little fool we got our legs moving he looks like he's marching like a nazi and you know that you can always tweak you know what bones it's it's working with working on a lot of this has to do with probably the ik that they use and the uh you know the, the differences between the animations uh on whatever like you know the ik is pulling like the hips are probably pulling the legs to do something or the spine is pulling the legs to do something and so if you don't even work with ik or if you have an animation that is not ik and ik dependent this would probably work for you um, a lot of times because see how he's twisting the spine and stuff like that we turned off a lot of it it's basically paraplegic in our top in our top layer or whatever our has weapon layer and the bottom layer is only paying attention to his legs so pretty cool this is a, a good method to get things done, and I hope you, you know, find success with it. You know, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you had any, any, uh, any good times, any issues, or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you want. You know, join our Discord. Uh, and if you want to, you know, support me on Patreon or just say hello on Discord, you know, I'm happy with anything. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. Have a good day.